One of the sharpest critics of the Supreme Court decision, no doubt, is a man who has called himself New Jersey's most conservative legislator, Assemblyman Michael Patrick Carroll, who joins us once again. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. I would, t I would take it that this is not a decision that will rest easily with you. No, I, you know, my, my thought has always been that the Supreme Court ought to stay out of political decisions and that what it was. Uh, society has defined marriage all by itself without courts getting involved for years and years and years, and it could have done quite nicely now. The, uh, the whole uh, Jersey angle on this, many have said within the uh, gay rights community, the ACLU and others, that this will be now ground zero for a battle over this issue. The governor has vetoed bills that would take it there, and he said he'd like to put it in front of the voters. Would you like to see this put in front of the voters? Well, yes and no. I, I, the, the fact is, is that if it's going to be a, quote, fundamental right, unquote, then it should be in the Constitution, and that has to go before the voters. If it's going to be a statute, which is how we've always defined marriage in the past, then it can be done by the legislature with the consent of the governed. Uh, again, to my way of thinking, there's nothing particularly evil about the proposal, it's just unnecessary. I mean, it's uh, what, unnecessary in what way? In the sense that that right now, you and I, oh, you could be gay for all I know. You're treated exactly the same way as any straight. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have marriage equality in the mm -hmm. state. We treat every man the same and every woman the same. All that we say and all that society has ever said is, are you presumptively capable of making a baby between the two of you? And if mm -hmm. you are, you can get married. Well, but what about those who are gay who say, you know what? I mean, this case revolved around. Uh, a lesbian couple in New York, the, the survivor of whom was going to be deprived a substantial amount of money from the estate of her, of her deceased Isn't partner. Isn't that wonderful that we've now finally developed one particular group of one percenters who the left actually thinks taxes should go down for? Wealthy lesbians, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's the only tax but, cut I think they've ever supported. But, but that notwithstanding, and, and charming though that, that may have been, you know that, that that is the defining line about whether or not people are being treated fairly. If the tax code has, has eliminated the possibility of them sharing in what they may have well, through, no, let's, let's through de facto. My mother, my grandmother and my aunt lived together for 70 some odd years. When my aunt died, my grandmother couldn't take her, uh, her pension benefits. My grand, she wasn't entitled to any social security benefits. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? There are certain relationships that society blesses and certain that it doesn't. And a procreative relationship has always been that which society blesses. Uh, if a gay relationship breaks up tomorrow from society's perspective, so what? I mean, it may be of huge importance to the people, but from society's perspective, it's not. Now, as a matter of, of law, that's why I oppose it. I just don't see the point in getting society involved. We shouldn't say anything about gay relationships. They're just not a matter of societal concern. Okay, well, I have you here, too. You have spoken out. You sponsored some legislation which has now been signed into law Correct. on landfills, on legacy landfills and the dangers that they reputedly uh, present. Uh, not reputedly. I mean, there's this no doubt about this one at all. I mean, uh, it, there's a certain irony, of course, in the fact that they had a closed-down landfill and they wanted to turn it into a solar project project and that produced uh, huge problems when they uncapped it. Uh, I think this is the first time I've ever actually sponsored a money bill uh, to provide for not, and it's just, it's not local. I mean, this is, this is Roxbury happened to be the example that was before us with the uh, Fenimore landfill. Is that the worst in the state? Uh, who knows? I mean, you know, what, what, when they took off the, the, the cap on it, it created a problem. And the idea was to create some method whereby DEP could go in and have the authority to act in such a fashion as to abate that problem immediately. But does that in a way acknowledge the fact that perhaps our environmental laws were not as strong or not as well enforced as they could have Envi been? Again, environmental laws are one of those things which, which we should be careful about property rights, but at the same time, there's a clear public interest in them. Uh, you know, those of us who are conservatives, remember the first two syllables in that are conserve. You want to make sure that your environment is not polluted by other people. And when you have the stench of rotten eggs so bad that they are thinking about closing down schools and they don't want to send the cops into the areas, that's a problem. And you know, a lot of this stuff was created back before we knew any better. Well, now we know better. And so we have to be very careful around the edges. And when the state can act in such a fashion, uh, it should. About 20 seconds left. Do you think more legislation is necessary to accomplish this? Who knows? I mean, right now, we were surprised that they didn't have the authority that we tried to give them to do this one. Uh, it may be, it may not be. Uh, anytime the legislature acts, it's with a blunt, it's a sort of blunt force, so you gotta be careful. Uh, but that said, there are certain circumstances where the hammer is the appropriate tool. Assemblyman, on that note, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure.